Volunteers. Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Mike. Hi. Pamela. Hello. John. Tim. Tim. And our special guest, Joni. Hey. Met her at Jackalope. And she was in the area, came and joined us tonight. So thanks for joining us, Joni. All the way from Arizona. Yes. Uh, to start with, I'm actually drinking beer tonight. I haven't been doing that for a long time, but... Beer, beer misses you. <laughs> <laughs> and I missed it. <laughs> I'm drinking Old Goats and Oats by San Marcos Brewing. It's a, it's a, a oatmeal stout. Of the finest caliber. It is pretty good. I'm enjoying it, too. And also, yes. <laughs> what do you guys think? It's very good for a stout, yeah. I like stouts, but this is really nice. I'm missing out on the stout. I <laughs> <laughs> like some stout. <laughs> Sorry. I like it. On, on the wine this evening. <laughs> yeah, for what, drinking wine, what happened to me? What's going on? How did this happen? How am I Strange, wine? strange roll of events. <laughs> but it's, it, it's, it's uh, very good. What is it? Uh... Uh, red Diamond, it's a uh, Pinot Noir, that's that's the word for it, for that type of wine, the red stuff. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good, yeah, it's tasty. It's it red. It, it doesn't have that that, uh, that, that sulfur taste if you get, like, certain wines that are, are, I don't know, how you get rid of the taste or what throws it in there, but some of them kind of have that weird taste to it, so. None of that, very good. Sulfates, I think. Yeah, sulfates. So that would, yeah, sulfates. Maybe all this had something to do with our topic this evening, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so what we're talking about fear, yeah, and um, I don't, you know, I mean, like I was thinking about, uh, you know, and I had uh, friends like give me suggestions on like, you know, what we should do it on, and you know, it was all pretty thoughtful. I'm like, yeah, 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 let's do it like that, you know. We can talk like, you know, about that. That's a good idea. But to be quite honest, like this is one of those topics that can go anywhere real quick. And the the way I started thinking about it, like on the way over here on on the train was I'm thinking like, well, so if we're gonna talk about fear, what's fear? Uh, well, fear is an um, emotional response based on situations in your life, and that's how you, you may or may, something may or may not cause you to be feel, fearful. So, you know, that's the kind of like scientific, like dry thing of it, but, so we all, ha we, we all have moments where we're in fear, you know, you know, some of us, get are, are more fearful than others in certain situations and, and whatnot. So, you know, we, I think we could all genuinely say honestly that we are not all without fear. So from then you kind of think like, okay, well, so that's, that's a, you know, a really basic part of our, of our psychology, right? You know, it, it's like fear, love, hate, other things like that. Like it's really basic. Like when you're in those emotional states, it's like you're really there. You know, it's not like something like, oh, I'm curious about something, what's this? It's not that sort of like inquiry sort of thing. Like if you're in a state of fear, it's, it's pretty quick and, and, and pretty, you know, prominent. So that being said, it's kind of like, well, so there are people in this world that will use that really basic part of your brain to make you afraid to do things. Or, you know, or hopefully the exact opposite you have people in your life that will help you not be afraid of things they acknowledge that as being a basic thing and that can be bad for you too so yeah i don't know it's it's, it's and there really are definitely thing. people out there trying to brainwash you into being fearful yes sadly <laughs> yeah there is people out there that want to make you afraid uh some of them uh you know uh have badges and and nice hats and and stuff like that, and they call themselves government. Sadly, there are also people who are not in government who are trying to get you afraid to do things. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, I don't, I don't want to dwell on, on, on religion exactly because I don't think that's the biggest purveyor of fear, strangely. Uh, some people are probably going to disagree on that. Well, but, different, um, different centuries, I think they use different elements for fear. Yeah, you know, I mean, there was, uh, you know, I mean, the, you know, for, for, you know, many hundreds of years, you know, the, the Catholic churches, you know, you know, would would talk about fire and brimstone for most sermons just to get people to make sure that they showed up. Well, I think you I know? think religion is a power base, it, uh -huh. and so like any kind of power base, uh, less than moral people are going to use it for their immoral ends. Uh -huh. So to direct it more, maybe a little bit more into the topic is is right now you have these power bases. 
what is causing the fear in the people? Mm. Are they withholding knowledge and information? Because mm -hmm. to me, I've always understood fear to be the lack of knowledge or the lack of information. Right. Um, because once you the have the information, the fear is the fear of the unknown. Or kind yeah, of thing. basically, fear of the unknown. And once you know something, it's no longer fearful. You take precautions. You adjust your, your how you approach things in being more aware of what's say in the woods. Yeah. Um, in that manner. Uh, and then then I was thinking about like, well, how is it that like, how is it that I don't know how other people work through it, but I thought to myself, well, how do I get past things that I'm fearful of. I mean, there's certain things like I'm, you know, may not ever be able to get past being fearful of. Ticks are disgusting. I hate ticks. I find a tick on me, I flip out. And, oh my God, it's a tick. Why? Because it's gross. It's a parasite. It's fucking disgusting. But, you know, there are other things that, you know, I've been like, well, I'm afraid of this and why? And what I found out that helps me is to understand the consequences of confronting the fear rather than running away from right. it. You know, that flight or, uh, flight or uh, fight response, mm -hmm. you know, of like, okay, well, so I'm not running away from this. I have to confront it. Well, what do I do to make myself less fearful? Think about all... Give the government more power. Give the government more power. <laughs> That's what I do. I say if I keep voting harder, I will have no fear. All right? No, um... I, I, I think shut about... Shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> Sanity. Doing the same thing repeatedly. You wouldn't have fear. You, you know, said insanity. The, 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 <laughs> those guys on the other side of that invisible line, you should be afraid of them because they have different flags and they may or may not speak a different and language. And they carry diseases. Diseases. And take all your jobs and they can't <laughs> speak the language. <laughs> They'll take your jobs. They took my job. <laughs> but, um... So... And don't forget ISIS. Oh. Yeah, I just had that ISIS. conversation today. But I, I can say Archer, that... Archer, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, John. <laughs> no, yeah. And you were saying it pretty much in, in different ways, but uh, I've specifically mentioned to my daughter as an example, like when you're afraid something, you know, I didn't tell her to transmute it, but basically transmute fear to curiosity. And, okay, right. you know, Curious people generally aren't fearful people. Mm -hmm. And in the... You know, uh, process of truth discovery or whatever you're asking questions that help you get get centered and not be polarized by fear. Uh, you were kind of saying that, I think, but uh, that yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you were saying to uh, to approach the fear. Yeah, 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 yeah right, right away yeah. from it. You yeah, fight, fight yeah. not necessarily fight the fear, but, but but make yourself aware of it and what was causing. That, mm -hmm. uh, that reaction and, and you know and to to uh, to think about all the different variables you know of like okay well so if I do fight this thing that is making me fearful or confront it what's going to happen you know like let's 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 use a crazy example like a bear well okay so I'm gonna fight a bear what happens if I fight the bear bear could kill me probably yeah probably hmm do I have any sort of weapons to fight this bear with no hmm it would be more responsible of me to maybe try to run from the situation rather than fight it, you know? Uh, but, but a lot of our fears are based on either incomplete knowledge or mm -hmm. irrational. Yeah, uh, irrational knowledge is yeah. another one, too, of like, you you know, maybe I, if I, just because I see a bear does not necessarily mean that bear is going to immediately attack me. You know, if you see the bear from a distance, it's like, probably don't want to go down that way by the river. The bear is there looking for salmon. Don't go near the bear. Right? Many people who are attacked by dogs is a child, for instance, mm -hmm. go through life fearful of dogs yeah. for the rest of their life, right? And they've never right. mm -hmm. gone back and kind of uh, got warm and cozy with their fear and tried to turn it into, uh, you know, understand it, why they are acting that way, as an example. Right, so, so Tim was yeah. saying about the knowledge base, right? So if you have fear, you're, you need, there is some requirement to overcome it, right? you have to have some kind of knowledge of what you didn't know before, right? right? So if, so my son had that problem with dogs. Somehow he he started noticing that he would feel fine around the dog, but the dogs would start growling at him. And then as that happened, then that made him more fearful. The more that happened, then the more the dog seemed to growl at him. So we had to talk him through, you know, what they're sensing from him. Same with wasps. It was really strange. Wow. So they were fearful oh, yeah. around them. Yeah, yeah. So he had had to really make a change, you know, make a decisive change 
either to stay in fear and have it get worse mm -hmm. or to confront the fear and overcome it and then therefore be able to reach out and be at peace around the wasp or like you know with the black widow that we just had here you know <laughs> it's valuable to have those lessons young in life too you know what i mean to be able to come so, so to, to come back on a little bit of a point you were saying mike you were saying thinking being able to think the process through so mm -hmm. in a way you need an imagination yeah 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 like what so john was saying yeah the curiosity yeah, yeah, okay. curiosity or imagination so we seem in a way to be losing the people seem in a way to be losing the imagination. For mm -hmm. instance, you approach someone with an idea of a society without a law, without a governing, uh, an upper governing force. Right. Um, and they say, oh, I just can't imagine something like yeah. that. So now they've lost that ability for imagination, mm -hmm. yet they fear. Mm -hmm. So they aren't able to say, oh, what, t take different paths of scenarios, like you were saying, mm -hmm. that, you know, what, what to do with a bear, and, and, and it can, you have a solution, and you feel comfortable with a solution. Mm -hmm. So it, it creates a chaos of which of which they're they're living in, and their fe their fear is of chaos to begin with. <laughs> it's usually misdirected, right? Especially if we're talking about somebody trying to take com control over, you know, produce a fear in us. Then you know it's misdirected. You know where, like you're saying, the imagination mm -hmm. of where the fear needs to actually be, and then fear often is there to alert us then that there is some action that we need to take. You know that there is something wrong. Like with my son, there was something wrong. Right. And he was communicating something that was not healthy. And so at that point, then there's opportunists who take, you know, the animal takes, you know, liberty right. because there's, you know, that's what's being communicated. And I think that's, you know, what then we're up against, right? Yeah, why it's why a we confidence. Well, the you, you remove the confidence also. Yeah, that's. But confidence then, in the individual right. from taking from take from using the fear as a confidence remover. So you remove the imagination, you remove confidence from people, then all of a sudden this fear seems to grow. Yeah. Right. So in a way it's being created through whatever channels are causing these eliminations of imagination and fear, education system or media systems or well then you take the pointy fingers. <laughs> you take everything that's good then. On the other side, like you said, imagination or courage or confidence. And those are the things that oppose all the things that are negative, right? So we need to be able to develop the things Create that more arts and crafts override, and override fear, right. right? Things that override, I mean, to me, it's that balance, right? If there's something negative, it has to be overcome with something good. So if someone's trying to produce that negative, then we need to oh. fight it back by saying, no, I'm going to have courage, you know, and then produce a solution. Reinforce right? it with a positive solution. To right. counter, to counter fear. Because right. yeah. they are, I mean, I guess the schools, they are eliminating arts and some of these arts and rec things where they actually use the imagination, music and rec, or arts. Or right. Yeah, those are, those are always the one first ones. things one that were dropped. First why, would go, you, yeah. why would those be the first They're to go? They're considered extra. Well, if, if, we, if we want to go the, down the route of, of education, let's look at it, the origin of the modern education system, which is uh, Prussian the Prussian system. system that used fear and control okay. to create, basically so that they could create an army right. that would challenge the world. And then why part of that indoctrination that we have is that the education system has anything to do with our education. I mean, right. even if they're not doing something, it, we don't need to give them that power that we couldn't just use creativity or, or have our own families participate. Again, adding arts, adding arts and more mm -hmm. crea creative type of things around the home, mm -hmm. as opposed to sitting in front of a box that mm -hmm. sends all these negative and depressing messages out there. Right. You're being schooled instead of educated, right? <laughs> you know, like you're being told this is the way it is. Well, unfortunately, parents use that kind of as babysitting services as well. Mm -hmm. And once school's done, it's like to do your homework and then you're free. So... Yeah, the, well, or that, even, that comes or with even the you go into the after-school programs. Right, yeah. right. That comes with the reverence of authority. It's hard for them to get done what they need to do without some reverence of authority, which particularly in America, you had such a strong sense of... Uh, individuality and individualism that early Americans it was it took obviously uh, 
many generations to soften them up appropriately or enough to really you know start subverting uh, our individual curiosity and individuality could it maybe be that like um, as an example that those people were less fearful you know what I mean because they because if you think about you know the idea of going to uh, let's go across the Atlantic Ocean, which, you know, by the way, you know, as a culture, we're kind of really not, you know, too new to, it or, or, you know, this isn't too familiar to us. They've only really been doing it for, what, 300 years, which is a long time, but, you know, at the same time, it's, what, a three, four-month trip. You know, that's not, you know, exactly that common to be going across the Atlantic. So let's go across the Atlantic to a place where... Yeah, sure, you can grow food, but the food you're growing is different. It's a different diet. There's, uh, there's already people living there who don't speak the same language you do. There's, there's that sort of a thing. And then on top of that, there's just wilderness out there, you know. So that's saying, oh, let me, I'm going to leave my, my fairly comfortable life in Europe in maybe a small town or even a big city of like, well, you know, I know how this is all organized and structured. I'm gonna go over there, like so. The so you have a, uh, you have a, a at least a part of the world that is was started by people who must have had less fear in order to do it, and so I, you, I don't think fear is necessarily the issue there. Okay. I think, and, and this doesn't really have to do with the topic, but I think it was more of. Look how bad it was in Europe that they would do that. that you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that, uh, that how bad it was overcame maybe their fear yeah, of doing yeah. the yeah. unknown. It still took a lot of courage to do that. The unknown was, was, was much happier. No, but sound, no absolutely. It took better. a lot of courage to do that. Right, yeah. agree, um, yeah. But that doesn't mean that they, courage isn't the absence of fear, though. Yeah, right. I agree. It, courage is overcoming fear. There's a, right. a movie that I think we spoke about in the past, but for the camera's sake, I guess. Uh, it's one of my favorite lines of any movie, and it's in Last of the Mohicans. I haven't read the book, so maybe it's in the book, that particular exchange. But uh, Hawkeye, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, you know, is kind of in his buckskin, standing on his, on his uh, musket, and uh, a British officer on horseback is rounding up the frontiersmen and telling them to go to... to, uh, to hike back to the fort to defend it against the French. And uh, Hawkeye makes, a, makes a, the British officer aware of the frontiersman agreement with General, I think it is, Webb, that they can defend their homes on the frontier against Indian attacks. And they had just spoken about a, uh, some homes that had been raided by Indians, whatever. So the officer on horseback is not moved by the frontiersman claim that they don't have to go to the fort and he asks Hawkeye what kind of loyal British subject does he call himself and Daniel Day Lewis just nailed the attitude and everything his response was well I don't call myself subject to much at all you know <laughs> right? <laughs> right and then he repeats it later you know someone asks him how can you go how can he leave now? And he's just like, well, I face north, walk about six miles, face left, and you know, <laughs> it's just like, there's like he's immune to the to the pleas of, of authority, and uh, unfortunately, that spirit has damn near been eradicated. So some of the possible, you know, just thinking back a little bit, the Industrial Revolution, where everybody used to have a job from A to Z, they would do the job. Right. Well, they started taking the job and just giving people slight little blocks so that they didn't understand how it functioned. So they're really curious anymore about, the, the, the curiosity was almost killed, huh. whereas in saying, you know, just, this is the part, make this part. And the innovation in a way where it didn't run through all these minds, they just, okay, I'm just going to make this part, and that mm -hmm. was it. And, it almost kills, it kills pride. It kills drive a lot of times in, in a certain way. And, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Made cars more efficient, though. I was going to say, everybody <laughs> had jobs and kids were being fed. Yeah, I never thought of it like that, but I guess that's accurate. You know, like, well, you, you no longer know the, the, the sum total of what you're doing to, mm -hmm. to, to keep the business going, but you know that you're doing that. So if you don't feel the desire to ask it, 
you know, then you'll never know, right. really. You know, I'm pretty sure if you ask, like, the guy farther up the line, hey, how does this part go together this one? Most people today say, well, I don't know. That's not my job. Yeah, yeah, it's not my it's not my job to know. Lot. It's not my job to to want to know. It's like what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, lack of back to kind of a lack of curiosity. Right. Yeah, and I, I, you know, that how does that relate to, you know, throwing it out there of like, well, how does this relate to, uh, you know, government and and the the, the society and we li- what that we live in, is that you know, we you know usually talk to people eventually about anarchy to people, you know, or, or maybe have that conversation with somebody every now and then. And, you know, a lot of times you get the response of, oh, this, um, that can never work, you know, well, you know, who's going to do this? Who's going to protect me? Mm-hmm. The cops aren't going to be there. Who's going to build the roads? There's a fear, uh, which is, which I think stems from, <laughs> dog is fearless, uh, which, um, which stems from a lack of, of imagination, you know, of uh, just, well, you know, of, just because it's always been this way, it's gonna continue along that line. And there's and if you think about it rationally, that's using the same excuse of there's always going to be slavery. You know, we 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 therefore need slavery because it's always been this way. Right. If we yeah. end slavery, he's gonna pick the cotton. You know, and that's the that's another thing too is that you know there there are, are you know a number of people and. Uh, anarchists and they'll say like, well, I don't think that's ever going to happen in our lifetime. That's impossible. And this is the same people that you know. There, you can almost relate to that. I'm pretty sure there were abolitionists at the time when you know the, the British made slavery illegal in what was it, 1830s something. And then uh, you know after the Civil War, it was made illegal in the in the chattel slavery sort of sense. Oh, we'll never end slavery, but that happened in their lifetimes. And at the beginning of their lifetime, or at one point in their life, they said, oh, this will never happen. And then it happened. Right. There's, there's no reason to say, and I'm fairly confident that it's perfectly possible within my lifetime that I'm crossing my fingers there won't be a state by the time I die. You know, it's it, miraculous things can happen. I mean, what was it? Uh, you know, there's there's a computer that has the 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 the, the functionality of a mouse, right? Oh yeah, they created a no. It's a synthetic brain that has mm-hmm. the functionality of yeah of, yeah. Um, of a mouse's brain approximately. They're, you know. Well, let's all go back in time and tell me that when I'm eight years old, and I wouldn't believe it at all. I'd be like, no fucking way, you know. But it, there it is. I I saw something once that said, people are doing today what God couldn't do 20 years ago. And what they mean is what people thought was absolutely impossible 20 years ago, even for God. Uh, people are now doing today mm-hmm. through the technology that it, the advancement of technology. Of course, like curing certain diseases and so on and so forth. Hmm. Well, well, not. Huh? Or not. Or not. We're, we're creating. creating we're, cre- <laughs> we're creating. Oops, you're a very good point. <laughs> that way we're creating not. God's diseases. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you look at the pyramids, right? Still not be able to understand how they did that or Stonehenge and things. So, oh, you yeah. know, some of the comments, you know, that are made, I think, I think it would be liberating if we see that that they still have to face, they have to face uh, obstacles and things that that um, you know maybe we don't even understand now. We are in the context of our culture, so the things that we deal with, we maybe um, maybe spend more time highlighting how we are victorious within our own culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that those examples to the people that we talk with serve them more good than to say. You know, so many people don't understand this or don't see it because, the, um, so I, I guess I spent a lot of time trying to pick up on who's being courageous, right? So those doctors, obviously, that have been coming up, you know, dead, um, Ooh, yeah. they've obviously mm. lived courageously for quite a bit of time that we didn't know about, right? We didn't realize what kind of steps they were taking to fight you know, for us, really. I mean, they obviously overcame a fear. I mean, they, had, they were aware, so they're fe- they were no longer fearful, but they were just aware of what may have happened to them, and they were willing to take the right. the steps to with due to the you know, I mean uh, accountability. So I think if we highlight those things <coughs> more when we're in discussion mm-hmm. about people that are taking those steps, then I think it, it w- will give more courage. You know, give the people with more opportunity to take courage themselves. Well, you to, know. to see the forward movement right. instead of just looking in the back, right. passing all oh, this is hopeless. Right. And I thought it was obvious on the bankers that not all of them must be dying 
because they're wrong, they're, you know, they just want some, they were in competition and they were being taken out. We've got to imagine that a lot of those deaths are also because they were confronting things. Right, mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. Or awake, of course, aware. Yes. Yeah, Catherine Austin Fitz had an interesting perspective on this. She did say, not, she didn't speak to the courage aspect like you are with talking about being, yeah, uh, just basic information management, you know, liabilities and, and from higher up the echelon perspective. It's just uh, mitigating loss, you know, information management. But I think where fear becomes a real problem is when you turn on the news and everything is ISIS this and global warming that and just the constant you get overwhelmed. bombardment mm -hmm. of problem propaganda. propaganda. Yeah. You know, it's so true. Uh, several of us here uh, and recently... And you need to give us more, more power so that we can protect you from all these problems that we're showing you. Yeah, several <laughs> of us here had recently debated uh, a libertarian club here uh, and we were forwarding the notion of, of anarchy or the absence of the state. And it, it's, uh, it was interesting for me to realize how much of those who were still clinging on to the notion of the state were still embedded or trapped by fear, how much fear consciousness there was there. Like, ultimately, at the end of the day, they were still advocating for the state because of fears. Yeah, a number of the questions mm -hmm. were, you know, well, what about this? How right, is this right, going to happen? Right, what right. is, you know, what are we going to, you know? And yeah. it, it, it helped me remember, like, wow, how, like, when you get past that and leave the new, the daily news cycle and, and how those fears tend to just melt away. You know, they come, and I, I'm not saying I'm never fearful. I, 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 I gargle the sewage and from time to time can feel myself uh, get carried away, but it, it's, I catch it early and you realize, oh, this is, you know, uh, not rational or not productive, not a good use of energy, and you can kind of so, at least pull myself so, back. So fear, should, we, should, should fear be programmed, say, into artificial intelligence? Yeah, you know, um, I, I suppose that's a thing. You know, w w would that be a necessary thing for, like, uh, you know, maybe a sentient robot to have in them? It's fear. You need to understand that this will destroy all of your circuits and you'll be a little cube of metal and silicone or something. So it's kind of like, you know, if you, uh, you know, masturbate too long, you go blind. Or, you know, the, the type of sexual fear in the, in the robot of some sort. Yeah, you <laughs> know, what, what, what Robots, uh, you know. Well, you know, what I wanted to get to is I really wanted to go, like, on a little bit of, like, an Alex Jones rant today because, <laughs> like, you, you know, there's, there's a lot of fear going on with, with that gentleman. So it makes me wonder, would Alex Jones be afraid to have sex with a robot? He is a robot. <laughs> <laughs> He's Bill Hicks. <laughs> He's Bill Hicks? Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Okay. Bill Hicks robot. Bill Hicks robot. We'll have sex with Alex Jones. Oh. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> On that note, that's fear. <laughs> that's fear. That's fear. That's so scary. Yeah. Yeah. Go with peace. Good night. Good night. Good night.